Shavua Tov, Agutavoch, and welcome to our program. We're now in the middle of the three weeks, and we already spoke about the fact that Abba brings that three is a special number. It's a very positive number. And the Gemara says in Shabbos that uh, the Taylor is three. Taylor Nevi'im Iksuvim, the the Jewish nation are three, a triple nation, Kanim, Levim, Yisraelim, and so on. So there is a, a an advantage to the number three. Nevertheless, there's also a question that it's it's three weeks, it calls it, and they are called Sholish de Polonuso, three weeks of punishment. And with all the explanations that there's a Yerido, that is Selech Aliyah, that is descent is for the purpose of ascent, we can understand that. Nevertheless, one week would have been enough. Does it have to be two weeks or three weeks? More than that, the Gemara says in Bava Metziah, the famous Gemara, that Betloso Zimene Have So there is, in three times, there is an establishment. So here there's an establishment of Polonusa, of, 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 of pain. Three, t- three weeks of pain. Yes, there, there is something positive about the number three. Nevertheless, it's three weeks of Polonuso, three weeks of punishment, and not one week. One week would have been more than enough. It's not one week, and it's not two weeks, and, not three, and it's three weeks of Polonuso. How do we reconcile that? We will return to that in a moment. But first, our customary story. The Shabbos is Chovdal Tamus. It's the 39th yard site of my father, Chosei de Lepshnei Zalman, Bede Bissol Boruch, Zechlin Elivrocho. Pastor Wink Pachabad, Chovdal Tamus, Tovshim Mem Gimel. A few stories about my father, Wilder Rebbe. Uh, the shul in 770, as we know, Baruch Hashem, a great shul. Um, the the ex- expansion of the shul was in three stages. The first one was Tov Shin 1960. Uh, was the shul in 770, upstairs, and that became small. Downstairs was, was what was known as a shalash, an open area that was covered with a with a present, it was called in Yiddish, with a canvas. But then, then, then there was the first extension of the shul that took place in, in Tovshin Chof, 1960. And the Rebbe told the Rebbe Tzanchane that if not, the Bzalman Butman or the Motchei Rivkin fought mil the shul nid gehat. Then we would not have the shul. So my father, Zechelin Livrocha, had this chus, that he was very, very much involved in building the first shul, to the extent that the Rebbe said, if not for him, the Botchei that shul would not have been built. When the, the Levi Yitzchak, the Rebbe's father, was in Golus, in, 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 in Kazakhstan, our family was at that time in Frunze. Frunze is, was the main city in Kyrgyzstan, today it's called Bishkek. And my father, Olof Sholem, would send the Levi Yitzchak wherever he was in Chile. He would send them every month. He would send them the money that he needs for his padnose. And my father would say that the Levi every month would send them a kautel, a, a postcard uh, saying that he received the money. Now, he had many of those postcards, but when they left Russia, uh, they, couldn't, they couldn't take them out. This was in the years where the Levi Yitzchak was in Kazakhstan. In 1947, when the Rebbe was in Paris, he said to my father, the Bzalman, I know what you did for my father, and I would like to pay you back for what you did. And my father used, uh, used to tell the story that he said to him, that's how he called him, this was 1947, before the Nisias, I will ask you as you should not talk to me about this matter. I want to ask you that you should not talk to me about this matter. And he was always very, very pleased that the Rebbe accepted his plea, and the Rebbe never spoke to him about it again. Before 
And this is a known story, what I'm going to tell you. Um, but it's a story of the Rebbe and my father, Oliver Sholem. Before the Rebbe left Paris, the Rebbe left on uh, Monday morning, Chof Aleph Sivan. Uh, this was 1947. The night before, Sunday night, Chof Sivan, there was a big fabringen for the Rebbe in the house that we lived, uh, 10 Rue Dieu. And there was a whole, big hall downstairs, the hall where the Rebbe and the Rebbe met for the first time. It was a big hall. There were, meddling, there were weddings in that hall. And there are many, many stories about that evening. Um uh, Mavrom Yakubovich used to talk about it with, uh, with great awe, interpretation. And uh, he would say that... Um, between 8 and 10 of that evening, there was a Fabringen, and there were Rabonim, and, and there were speeches, like Atzeis Chem Lesholem, like a general, like Atzeis Chem Lesholem. And then at 10 o'clock, the Rebbe gave a, a, a clap in Tish, and the Rebbe said, Uniste fang tzachon achsidash et Fabringen. And now we're going to start achsidash et Fabringen. Chsidim who were at that Fabringen, that took, that, that took place till 8 o'clock in the morning, said that they were they saw something that they never saw before. The Rebbe would say to each one, he should say his name, uh, in his father's name, and he should say and, and say say Lechaim in his name and his father's name. And then the Rebbe Dalshant and the Rebbe spoke about this person's name and about his father's name. And the Rebbe and the Rebbe Dalshant min Anvi, min Aksubim, from Nigla, from Chsidas, from Khila, from Kabola, from Kola Taylo Kulo how how the, the the nature the character of this individual fits with his name and the, the people then are always from these pilots because they never saw something like that at the height of the pilots my father Shalom, was sitting next to the Rebbe. so between talks he said to the Rebbe that i heard from your father the believe Yitzchak, who said about you as mine zoom you Macht besser von mir, does better than I do. To which the Rebbe answered, Atate darf er sagen. A father has to say that. And my father answered him, A son darf er sagen. A son also has to say that. And Baruch Hashem, the father was zeichet that the Rebbe accepted it. The basic we have a question on the table. Yes, we were told that the number three has great attributes. The greatest, perhaps, or not perhaps, for sure, is that it stands for the Beis HaMikdosh Ashlishi, for the eternal edifice that is coming our way. Mikdosh Aleph Dalet Nun Yud Kenu Nu Yodecho. And as the Rebbe brings from the Zehal, the Zehal says that the first Beis HaMikdosh was Cholev because it was Binyon of the Baranash. It was the structure of man. The second Beis Amigdash was Cholev because it was the structure of man. The third Beis Amigdash is going to be an everlasting, everlasting edifice because it's the structure of God. Binyono de So we, the number three is great. Three of us, three Sholish Shri Golim. But the Rebbe asks the question, but what we do see is the three weeks stand for Sholish the Podonuso, for three weeks of punishment. And although we were, we are explained that the punishment is not for the sake of the punishment, and we have to understand that, and we have to accept that. It's not for the sake of the punishment. The punishment, however great, uh, nevertheless, it's not for the sake of the punishment. It's for the sake of the Yerido. It's for the sake of the Aliyah. Wonderful. The question is, why did we need such a big, big Yerido of three weeks? Would have been enough of one week, would have been more than enough. More than enough. One week of Yerido for the Jewish people. Genug. Two weeks, three weeks. That's the Rebbe's question. Especially in view of what the Gemara says in Bava Mitzir, that something that happens three times, that forms a certain permanence. Uh, it forms a, a, a chazok, something happened three times, so this is three weeks of Polonius, three weeks of punishment. How do you reconcile that? 
before we get to the answer, we are in the three weeks, and the Rebbe asks that we should learn the the the, the alochas that have a a, a a connection with the Beis Hamikdash, and uh, the Rebbe brings the Medrash, where Almighty God said to to Yecheskel, Lechamei Elohim. They should, they should, they should learn the 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 the, the, the alochas of of the binyan abayis. So Yecheskel said to Almighty God, the binyan shalelom, you are sending me here. These are broken people. After the after the chubm of the first Beis Hamikdash, the Beis Hamikdash was destroyed. They are they were thrown out of Eretz Yisrael. They are broken people. And that they should they, they should learn the the uh, the form of the Beis Hamikdash. Can they do something about it? They're broken. The Beis Hamikdash was just chodiv. They are left homeless. Now I'm going to tell them you should learn about the Beis Hamikdash, and they're going to say, "What else do you want from us? We, we we don't know where the next problem is coming from." Not only that, Cheskel gave Almighty God an answer. Wait until Mil Tashem will come back to Eretz Yisrael, and then I am going to tell him. Almighty God said to you, Cheskel, "Vechi b'shvil." Just because my children are in exile, so the, the, the building of my edifice should be bottled, should be old. Go tell them that they should learn about the forms of Beis Hamikdash. And I will, and I will, said Almighty God. I will I will accept it as if they are actually building the Beis Hamikdash. So first of all, what we see here is that, but by the fact that we are learning about the Beis Hamikdash, then Binyan Beisi is not bottle. If we are learning about the Beis Hamikdash, then the, then the Binyan of the Beis Hamikdash is not an old. It's not bottle because we are learning about it. And the Rebbe says that if Almighty God is going to accept it as if they are building. That's even more when they are building themselves. Why? Because if they are building themselves, sometimes they can be they can build a little better. There's, there will be no real perfection in their building. Maybe they can build better. Maybe they can work a little harder. When it's male and nialeim, when Almighty God accepts it as if they built that, that is imperfection. That's even more because Almighty God accepted us if they build it. So that's even stronger. So therefore, what we have to do, so that Binyan Basi should not be bottled, so that the building of the Amigdash should not be annulled, we have to learn about the, the, the plans of the Beis Amigdash. And the Rebbe says, you find it in Yecheskel, Memem Aleph and Mem Beis, you find it um, in the Gum, you find it in the, in the Gum, in, in, in the Gemara, and you find in 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 in, in the Rambam Hilchas Beis Abchira. You find the Gemara, the Sechtemidus, and so on. So, if we open up Hilchas Beis Abchira, we find something. We find a Rambam that is very glaring, and very telling. And the Rambam says in Ilchas Bishav Kedepi the Kalev Aloche Yud Beis and I quote, "Vehakel Chayovin Livnes Ulesayed Beatzmon Ubemameno Manoshim Venoshim." And everyone is obligated to build and to assist in their person and with their money, men and women, Kemigdash Hamid Bol. Like the Migdash that was built in the Midbol. Migdash and Midbol is simple, that that's a reference to the Mishkon that was built in Mishkon. And there it says, Almighty God said to Mishkon, everybody should build. Everybody should bring what they can. 
Kesev was over, everyone was involved. What was the Rambam see? That everybody should be, is chayev to build and to assist in his person, in his persona, and through his money. Men and women, like the, like the Mishkon in the Midbar. And the question is, who is the Rambam writing this haloche for? Is the Rambam writing this haloche for the Jews who built the Beis Hamikdash in the time of Shlomo Hamelech? Historians will tell you <laughs> it can't be. The Rambam wasn't born then yet. That was before the Rambam. For the second Beis Hamikdash, for the, the that time of Ezra, the Rambam wasn't there yet. He wasn't born yet. So who is he writing this halacha? All everybody has to build the Beis Hamikdash. What Beis Hamikdash is he talking about? When the Rambam wrote that the first Beis Hamikdash was destroyed and the second Beis Hamikdash was destroyed and we were in Golos. What is he talking about? So there has to be one solution of Beis Hamikdash. He's talking to us about the third Beis Hamikdash. And he's saying this is a halacha. The Hakel Chayovim Livni Sul Said Be Atzmom of Mamenum Anosim Benosim. The third Beis Hamikdash is coming our way. As a matter of fact, the more we're in Golis and we're in Golis long enough, now we understand the halacha very well. He's talking to us. And the Rebbe tells us we're the last, the last generation of Golos, the first generation of Geulo, and we are the generation that are going to see the building of the Beis Hamikdash, says the Rambam. Kindalach, remember, you have to build the Beis Hamikdash. Kemikdash Hamidbol, like the Mikdash, like the, like the Mishkan in the Midbol. This is what the Rambam is telling us. Bol Hashem. The Rebbe has opened our eyes and told the whole world that we live in a special time. The time of Mashiach, the time of Geula, the time of building the Beis Hamikdash, and this is the halacha, that everyone is obligated to build the Beis Hamikdash in their, in, their, in, their, in their person, which means actually building, and where their money, and that's for men, and that's for women, just like the Mikdash in the Midbul. Concerning the the question that we had, the certain concern the Rebbe is asking this question, Oh, and he also draws our attention to the Shabosim that are in the three weeks, and the Rebbe says, and leave it up to our Rebbe that these Shabbosim are special because there's an advantage to these Shabbosim. During the three weeks, the Halacha says, and we honor that, that the certain things of Simcha are prohibited in the, in the three weeks. So therefore, we have to be somewhat uh, smaller and, and more reserved in our Simcha. Nevertheless, Shabbos makes up for it. Not only does the Shabbos make up that one is going to say, it's a Shabbos in the three weeks, so I'm going to be uh, sad and mourning in this Shabbos, a Shabbos of the July Wochen. But that's not what Taylor says. That, that on Shabbos, a of Bay, on Shabbos, one is not allowed to be sad. And therefore, there should be no availers on Shabbos before Hesse at all. As a matter of fact, because of the on the Shabbosim, the Rebbe says, we have to make up for the days of the week. The days of the week, we have to be somewhat reserved in our expression of Simcha, because it's this three weeks. But on Shabbos, we do not have that restriction. So on Shabbos, we have to make up for the weekdays. And indeed, the Rebbe says, you saw on the Rebbe, that the Shabbosim of the three weeks, there was a greater Simcha than any other Shabbos. Moreover, the Rebbe says, Shabbos is a metaphor for Mashiach. Mashiach is Yem Shekulei Shabbos. So now we are getting the Shabbos is, 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 is telling us a little bit about time of Mashiach. You don't work, everything, everything is done, you go to shul, uh, you have a big meal, a big feast, you sit together with the family. The only problem is that the Shabbos doesn't last forever. Then 
there is Shabbos and and then after that there's, a, there's another week. However, if it would be a perpetual Shabbos, a Yem Shekule Shabbos, which means a long Shabbos forever, the Shabbos never ends. So, which means you're in a spiritual height all the time. And that is Amein, that is a reflection of Moshiach. So, therefore, Shabbos, we have to be extra, extra, ex, extra, extra happy. Moreover, the Rebbe says, we're extra happy because we're getting to the coming of Mashiach. And when Mashiach comes and he's coming now, not only are we going to get back what we had before, because the Rebbe says, if we're going to be in Golos, and then we're going to be redeemed, and Mashiach comes, we will get back what we had before, just that, that means that we were in Golos for nothing. We didn't gain anything. We're just getting back what we had before. So so what was the purpose of the Golos? The answer is that we're going to get back much, much more than we had before. So the, the, the Shabbos is indicative of those days in Miyot Hashem, of the Yem Shekule Shabbos. And this answers the question of the Rebbe. Why is it that there is a permanence in, in, in the Polonius, in the punishment? Three weeks, not one week, not two weeks, three weeks. And three weeks, as we know, constitutes a certain permanence. And the Rebbe says that's, that, that is exactly the answer. The Yerida, the ascent, the descent is for the purpose of ascent. So if the, the descent is going to be limited, then the ascent is also going to be corresponding to the to the this descent that's going to be a, a little greater, a little bigger than before. If the Yerida constitutes a permanence, then the Ali is going to be completely out of proportion. Now, in in the words in the words of the Rebbe, the Dray Vokum von Tloso de Polonuso, the three weeks, Velcha Kumen Mipnechato Enu, that come Bifnech Mipnechato Enu because of our sins, Badait Na Yeride Achigdelo, constitute the, the, the greatest Achigdelo, the greatest descent. Why? Because it has a Kvius of Chazoka. It has a a a a quiz means an establishment of of of, of, of a permanence of uh, of punishment. Nevertheless, because of that, because because of that, we are going to get Emil Tashem a a the Gulu Hamitis Vyashlemo in the is But since now we're talking about the Yerido is a Chigdelo. But we want that through this descent we should have an, as, an, an ascent, which means an elevation that is that is totally out of proportion, the greatest elevation possible. So because of that, then we need also then, then we need the three weeks of descent. And then it's gonna be Altira of the Yankif. Why Mishoma Yeritcho? That are even Mishoma ni that 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 I am going to from those depths I am gonna pick you up. And I'm gonna bring Ashnebadim Tabik and Nash and Mishom Eritcho Numashem. This is on the on 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 the Lumase on the nations who are against God. However, Yankif, because he is experiencing an unprecedented Yerido of not one week and not two weeks, but three weeks, which constitute a permanence, because of that he is going to experience an unprecedented al precedented Aliyah, and as the Rebbe calls it, the Aliyah Achikdelo, that was greater than all, than, than everything before that. Now, someone is going to ask, Aliyah HaChigdelo? Is Mashiach going to be the biggest Aliyah that we ever had? Let's, lo let's lo open up a history book, and we go through Jewish history. There was Matan Taylor, when Almighty God himself descended on the mountain of Sinai. 
says the Mitra Rebbe, that the Gilui of Moshiach will be a greater Gilui than the Gilui of Matan Tehra. In other words, this Gilui that we are going to get because of three weeks will be greater than all the Giluim that we Jewish people have experienced in the past, Kiryas uh, Yamsuf uh, and Matan Tehra. This will be greater than the Gilui of, of Matan Tehra. As is of the Mitra Rebbe, that's what the Mitra Rebbe says. So, Bemele, now we are waiting for the Gilui Achi Godel, a totally, totally unprecedented um, elevation and, un, and an unprecedented illumination that the Almighty God is going to send an eternal light. And not only that, the Besamikdash that we are going to see, the Besamikdash that we are going to help build is going to be a Migdash Aleph Dalet Nun Yud Kenun Yodecha because Almighty God will help, will help as well. And therefore, He is going to be the one who is going to be the, do the main structure of the Besamikdash. We're going to help, but the main structure He is going to do. And therefore, it's going to be an everlasting edifice. Coming our way, gezoom te heet om vrede geheet. Op haar gola die dan, op haar simcha, op haar toe levo, op haar tee van die lewe aan nigle, op haar mate mee haar sal dat volg hem, op haar gesed, op haar lachamim, op haar tekef, op haar jad, mamesh.